Hi, this is Jessica Riley again. I am the chair of the Midfield School Committee, and I am here with Dr. Jeffrey Marston, who is our superintendent, to kind of give a rundown as we're kind of sprinting into the home stretch to bring the town to a special town meeting on November 7th to uh, vote as to whether to accept and fund uh, a new school, a new elementary school for uh, grades four and five on a Wheelock campus on Elm Street. So we thought it was important to really kind of talk to you in a very specific way about what went into our decision making, what we see as the facts uh, that we know of at this point, and what are things that we don't necessarily know or can't pin down before that time. I think that in some ways we should really start back at the very beginning, because there are people who never even heard of Medfield five years ago when we started this, started this and are now moving to Medfield, planning to have families, buying homes. So do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what grades these schools are and how many children we plan to uh, eventually put into the school or whatever uh, kind of flexibility over the next 50 years we may be able to have with this space? Sure, absolutely. So interestingly enough, I did meet some of those families at Medfield Day yes. uh, that had just moved in or moving in the next couple of months and they really didn't know much about the project other than what they saw on our, on our website. So um, there's definitely a whole group of folks that are moving into town and are excited about the, a new elementary school and the, and the prospect of their kids going to a brand new building. So that we started, as Jess said, um, we, we did our first statement of interest in this in 2012, then did another one in 2016, and then a third in 2017. Now a statement of interest is something you have to send to the state and they take a look at it and when they ex either accept you into the program or they say you're not ready for the program yet. So they accepted us in 2000, um, this, the December of 2018 after we applied in 2017. Um, and we're, we're looking at building a four to five elementary school with 575 students, uh, which will give us a lot of flexibility in the future. We, we won't have 575 students when it opens and hopefully opens in 2024, uh, but it will give us a lot of flexibility going forward as we see uh, more, uh, additional students moving into the community or additional construction that may happen in the community. So uh, it allows us to the flexibility to move grades if we need to and, and move in um, grades out of Wheelock if we need to. We have a lot of students in there. So we feel pretty good about the fact that the 575 will be able to support Medfield for many, many years to come. We are obviously a small town and there is no cavalry. We have very, <laughs> you know, we, we don't have a lot of commercial tax rate or commercial tax base. So we understand and i think that uh that our the important part is to think for the long run and really make sure that over time we're doing the best that we possibly can and that was one of the things that went into my decision making as a school committee member um, and i think went with all of ours we're all residents and we really do think about the stewardship of the town but our decision making was on the educational plan, which I think it addresses so many of the issues we have heard from our strategic plan, mm -hmm. from families over the years, from people who love the idea of having every kid in town go to uh, school following each other, but also knowing that we lose continuity, we lose a sense of community, and we lose a sense of being able to hold a family of kids for four straight years throughout their elementary school and that nothing gets lost in between because we have amazing teachers at all of our schools and I can personally attest how hard they work to communicate between schools. But unless you are able to be in the same space um, or in very close proximity to each other, having those informal conversations, having those like you know, oh, I saw that, I saw his brother, I saw her sister, you know, and knowing each family in that same intense way, you lose a lot. So I think that that was one of the things that we really considered in terms of thinking about how do we think about the town as a whole? Um, and how do we use our space most efficiently? And um, do you have anything so, else you want to kind yeah, of add Yeah, I mean, so that? your point about the education plan is really important. So one of the things that we had to do as part of this process is develop an education plan that we submit to the state. 
Uh, and it's actually a really great process. We involved the teachers and we got parents and community members and town officials involved into kind of a brainstorming session and see what, what was really important. And we actually did two, if you remember. Oh, so we, remember. Did, we did one <laughs> education plan for a four or five building and one education plan for a three, four or five building. Right. So at the time we we're looking at kind of long term, what would be the best solution? Um, and we, we probably agree that the three, four, five at some level might be the best solution, but it was very, very expensive. And we know that the town could not, August it could not uh, afford that. So it, we feel like yeah. that was the four or five is the best fit for the community right now. But that plan, um, it, when we got approval at the board, at the MSBA board was really, I mean, it was a lot of work that we all did in that. And MSBA said it really should be the model plan for any, any town or district that's looking to build an elementary school. So we felt really good about that feedback because we worked hard on it. Got a lot of information from the community, from teachers, from um, administrators, from staff, and, and put that together. And the neat part about it is, is the architects take that education plan and then they develop the school based on that plan. So they don't come in and say, we have this building in mind, let's try to fit the educational plan in it. They take our educational plan, and design the building around it, which as you can see from um, the, all the designs that are on our website, they did a phenomenal job with that. So we're excited about the fact that we were able to develop that plan, take the time to do all that, and the architects listened to us and built it and designed the building based on that plan. I also find that um, while I'm not on the school building committee, I have I attend many meetings and I've clearly been updated throughout time, and now I'm starting to get more and more involved because um, when this passes, I will be the guy who signs it. So, you know, I've been involved, but we're getting, mm -hmm. it's getting to the point where, you know, 70 years from now, somebody will see my name and... right. I feel a real sense of responsibility around that, even more than I could have even before. But one of the things that we've really liked about the architects that we work with is they're one of the they're a firm that has a really very well known uh, educational consultant, who I honestly felt, in some ways, as much as I've been up to my knees in this for years, I learned more about school design and pedagogy, and where we are thinking to the future in the two hours I spent with David than the bits and pieces that fly mm -hmm. at me over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. And then when I was able to see that vision uh, realized at the elementary school that they just built in Harvard, Mass., which was also designed by Arrow Street. And as I'm walking through the building, I, I was envisioning, how do I bring buses full of people up here and who do I get to <laughs> allow me to do that? Because once you see what what all of these kind of like educational terms actually mean, like breakout rooms, and all of a sudden you realize that a breakout room isn't like a room that you go off to on the side. It is the ability to bring kids from two separate classes who have mm -hmm. the same level of need and either need for uh, additional support or need for additional enrichment, right? You are clearly able to use your resources in a much better way and then it doesn't become just a complete break from the class, right? You're right. close, but you're isolated enough with a teacher that they can teach and then you go back and it's so much more fluid. Um, and so many of the kind of learning and exploratory parts of the building, I really started to understand what they were talking about when they said building is teacher, mm -hmm. that the building itself is made to teach the students as well, really. And it's, it's, it was an amazing experience if you can get to a new elementary school anytime soon, you will see how very different our buildings are now. Great yeah, people. That, that visit but, was was really important for us because it, yeah. you know, we've been looking at it on paper and then looking at it through a computer generated models, right. but to actually be in the building and see the construction and see what we've been talking about and discussing, it, it made a world of difference for all of us. So I think that was a, a critical uh, few hours we spent that Friday afternoon to, to make that visit up there. That's absolutely true. Um, and at your point about uh, the breakout spaces, like that's really critical for us as we continue to expand on our, on our project-based learning. And we're doing a lot more of that within the classrooms. But right now we're kind of stuck in a 800 square foot classroom and we can't do a lot of that. The new design and, and the reason why they designed it is because we were really, we, we thought that was an important piece. The breakout rooms are either, the spaces are either right outside the classroom which allows two, two classrooms to share a space or separate breakout rooms that allow, as you said, uh, teachers to take a couple of kids from each room to do some individualized work and instruction on that. So that those are spaces we don't have now. 
And you know they, they've been in education for a while now and, and, and we've been trying to make do with you know going in the hallways or, or essentially the existing Dale Street using closets uh, to do some of that work. This that allows us to, to really have that, which is it's something our kids and our teachers deserve. So I think it's really important for us to move in that direction and make sure that we have a, a beautiful facility for them to use and do that. And to kind of hinge on to one of the other reasons that we really thought about uh, the Elm Street and Wheelock campus being kind of the, the best option when we thought about it long term is that, uh, you know, Wheelock itself is a great school full of caring people, but it is also 50 years old at this point. And many of the uh, kind of more modern amenities, comforts, facilities um, can be shared across a longer period of mm -hmm. time. It can, you know, the, the advantages of our new elementary school can benefit twice as many kids for twice as long than if we were to simply have cited it in the center of town and kind of continued with our same model. And that seems so important to me. Again, this is a resource saving issue. We need, we need to use our resources in a way that, is, that are smart and smart in the long run, not just in the short run. Um, and to be able to really use that flexibility of space in a short sidewalk between the two schools, a short drop off for buses that is one and not two stops. Right, so we eliminate that one Easy, stop. right. So right now, Completely if you don't know. Completely separated parent drop off area. Right, so. if you don't know right now that we our elementary buses pick up all of our students and then they stop at Memorial, stop at Dale, and stop at Wheelock. So this would eliminate one whole stop where we'd still pick up all the students. And, and again, it's the same number of kids because they're going, it's, they're just going from one place You're to the other. Going from one place to another. Yeah. And they would pull into the existing Wheelock location, open the door. Kids would go to the right if they're going to Wheelock, and they'd go to the left if they were going to the new elementary school. It's just the efficiency there for not only our busing, but also for parents that have to drop off and be at two places at once, which we hear a lot about now, I, where they go yeah. from one side of town to the other. Well, this will allow you to drop off your children at one site. There's so many advantages of having a campus where you have grades two through five there, and that's the key, right? You can't say, well, how come you can't have grades, you know, K one, two, and then four? Well, there's, there's not a lot going on between those grades, but right. if you have successful grades of, of grades two through five, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on there. There's a lot of sharing of facilities you can do there. Um, as I, I said at a different meeting, but uh, both Steve and I were in another district that had a campus model like that for elementary schools, and it was seamless. The kids would go back and forth and they would, whether it was for the gymnasium or for the cafeteria or for arts and music, they would go back and forth a lot. And it, it provided kids that maybe in an older building, the, the right. use of the really nice amenities that are in the new building. So it, it worked really well. It's not a theory because we've seen it work well exactly. in person in our, in our own professional jobs. So I think it's, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense to do that campus model. I also understand, however, that, uh, and we have been very aware that there are real concerns around money and budget mm -hmm. and how this is going to impact um, your personal home. If you are a taxpayer in Medfield and you have, you know, your property taxes, you want to know what that hit's going to be. And we have some very good ideas around what that will be. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as we are able to get closer, um, to the vote itself, you should be able to see kind of really exactly what the impact should be, like maybe the, the first year and then sliding down, what kinds of debt's going to roll off the books that we already have that, are, that is quite close to coming mm -hmm. off. And Dr. Marston, I know that there's this really interesting, um, essentially a widget that will be on the website at some point. It'll be on the website very soon. So essentially you'll be able to put on what your home value is and it will calculate what the impact is going to be for you. Right. So we have specific a, to Medfield. So your right, home so value your as home value. done by the assessors right. at the whatever percentage that the assessors value that. And it will tell you exactly what the impact is going to be. Right. So there's, I know we had a, um, there was something out on Medfield Day that the school building committee was handing out uh, where they had a couple of different scenarios. So scenario one was a 30 year bond uh, with the average household assessed value in Medfield at $692,000 would see an $852 increase in year one, tapering to, to 520 in year, in year 30. Um, and then this offset is offset by $117 decrease 
um, in the first couple of years as debt rolls off on the town side. So the first scenario was a 30-year bond and the second scenario was a 20-year bond. So the average household again is 692,000 and we'd see a $1,030 increase in year one uh, and then it would taper down to 776 in year 30 and then again offset by the $117 uh, decrease due to debt rolling off the next couple of years. So the town's got to make a decision whether they're going to look for a 30 or a 20-year bond, but I think that gives you a, a ballpark depending on where you live and what your house is, uh, what the impact is going to be for you from this project. And as I said, that will be on our website, uh, www.medfield.net. You go on Explore, you click on Explore on the top of the page and it will say New Elementary School. You click on that and all the information you want regarding this project over the years is there for you to see, whether it's committee meeting minutes, committee meeting agendas, uh, designs, everything is all there. Oh, any presentations we've had at our community forums, but we will be adding that widget uh, very soon so you'll be able to plug that information in and find out what the impact is for you and your household. We want you to know what your options are. and But we also, I think I would emphasize as a, as a citizen, as a taxpayer, and as a school committee member that there is a very good possibility that if this does not pass, which we need, the school would need two thirds majority to pass at town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be remarkably difficult to get. We've seen, you know, I think historically our high has been about a thousand people at town meeting, mm -hmm. which means that truly only, what, 333 people, 334 would need to um, vote no. And then we would be back to the very beginning. It's scary in that because we know how much we need it, but the other frightening part is the finances of that. And I think that uh, there is a real concern that knowing how much building costs are going up um, and some of what the SBC is far more uh, expert in than I, but one of the figures that I heard at the open meeting uh, community forum on Wednesday is the expectation is the building costs could go up by 10% next year. And all of a sudden you start looking at compounding that 10% and even if it goes down to 5% the year after and 5%, which is the kind of normative growth, even five years from now, this becomes a very difficult project for our town to manage, even if right now it seems expensive and there is sticker shock, but this is, I feel as though we are so lucky to be able to have the professionals that we do on the school building committee because I am able to watch these folks who are in school construction, municipal construction, go through and truly dig out what is uh, unnecessary, what might be something that we could get rid of if we needed to, to bring it back in, but to make sure that none of the pr programming is getting lost. That's been a real we're, we're, eye opener. We're too. extremely fortunate in this community yeah. to have the school building committee that we have. As just said, they're they're in the school construction business. We have architects, we have um, uh, electrical um, engineers, we have a, a plethora of people that are just so equipped in doing this work. And it's not it's very unlike many school building committees where you might have one or two folks on there. Our whole committee is loaded with people that that uh, do this for a living. So we're fortunate they know you know, what the important things are to have in a school right. building. They know how the project and how construction business works. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been very, very helpful with us, as they have with other projects they've done in town. It's, a, it's mostly the members of the Permanent Building Committee um, led by Chair Mike Quinlan, so it's been great. Yeah. Uh, we're, but we're fortunate to have that in this community. One of the concerns I've heard is, and it's absolutely legitimate, is uh, what's gonna happen to the Dale Street building? And a lot of people are very concerned about its renovation costs if we were to keep it as a school building. A lot of people have seen um, costs that were put out through kind of a, a capital planning um, memo study that was done several years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people are like, it's gonna cost so much to mothball that. We don't wanna see it mothballed. So I can tell you officially, you know, there is a process in a town uh, that's in the Mass General Laws that talks about how a school district transfers um, a transfers a building to a town. 
And it's a negotiation and everything else. And we basically decertify it and then for education. And then the town votes to take it over again, one of those two thirds votes mm -hmm. town um, at town meeting. However, that will not happen until such a time that there are no students in Dale, right? That is when that vote, that decision, we will obviously be thinking about that as the global part of this entire project and what we think of when we think about uh, the town-wide master plan that has just been put into place, the hospital master plan, all of these things. So we will be having those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, many of the ideas that were raised at the Warrant Committee meeting um, on uh, Thursday, the 23rd, September 23rd, and it's on video as well, um, really kind of opened my eyes in a way that I think I had always known this, but I think that unless you're in kind of the municipality and you don't understand uh, how badly this town needs space. And if there is an actual building that can accommodate um, some of the programming that some of the people were talking about at the public meeting, for instance, Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. uh, and how they could have programming that doesn't necessarily stop for kids at eight or nine, but continue through teenage years, adults, mm -hmm. families, seniors, multi-generational. Which I think that was a part of the master plan, right? That, right. that teenagers wanted a place to yeah, go. Yeah, they, they need a place to go. to go. And that doesn't cost them money mm -hmm. necessarily to go in the same way that trying to do a, you know, you, when you're a teenager, you need to be able to do something that's not scheduled. And we spend so much time scheduling <laughs> kids because there's no place for them to go here. Talking to uh, Medfield Outreach, they have space at the high school. They work very, very yeah, uh, with smoothly us. with mm -hmm. the high school, but they are Medfield Outreach. Over the last 30 years, their mission has really changed from being just kids under 18 to a wide range of town services that they offer and to be able to have kind of a satellite where they could offer their clinical services office services, they are ready to bring more clinicians, a interns a clear vision for in. Mm. They don't have the space, mm -hmm. right? There are many other kind of small incremental people who and communities that, that need that. So I don't think that that building and its remaining lifetime would ever be wasted. That's my personal opinion. And that's something um, that we have not yet discussed as a committee but will be on the agenda very soon. The third concern I've heard people bring up the most right now is the environment. I am somebody who, <laughs> I love open space. I love the fact that I can be in Medfield and in the woods in literally 30 seconds from my house <laughs> and hike for three hours. That is such a unique privilege. I do not know of anyone I have ever spoken of in town who thinks, but I think we can just throw that we can just throw that away. We can throw away our principles on water, on the environment, just so we can build this school where we think it would be best. That is absolutely not how I hear any person that I've ever spoken to talk about it. And whether that were the truth or not, um, school, school building projects are held to the same standards as any other large building project would be for DEP regulations, for environmental regulations, for um, mitigation of stormwater runoff, uh, for impermeable surfaces. And, um, and that is a whole level of science that I do not know, but there are experts in the field and all of whom will be consulting <laughs> and put the full force of the DEP behind um, behind the, the project, because that is just the law of the land. There's no, we cannot shortcut that in any way, shape or form. Um, and in fact, the improvements that happen at the Wheelock School currently, um, in terms of changing how the driveway and the traffic flow goes, a lot of that is kind of, has been deferred over time. Um, those parking lots, those impermeable surfaces then also end up being held to the same standards 
that the DEP will hold in 2000, uh, in 2024 mm -hmm. when we open this school. So it's, there's no grandfathering in, there's no kind of exceptions around that. And in fact, I, I wouldn't want there to be. I drink the same water and as a town, we just funded um, a water treatment plant to make sure that we can use the wells that are, you know, within that same side of town more frequently and manage our water better. So I, it would be counterintuitive for us to not be as careful with our natural resources as possible. And it's also our children, you know, kids really value this open space. And if they found one thing through the pandemic, learning outside just opens their world in a different way. Mm -hmm. It sets their bodies in a different way. And it's, it's been one really good part of this whole uh, mess. Feel free to call it a mess. So the October community forum, as you know, we've okay. had forums every single month, um, just going over different topics. The, the one we just did last week was on tax impact and budget costs. Uh, we're gonna look at doing one in, for water in okay, October great. so that all these topics will be uh, discussed and we'll have open conversation around that like we've had at all of our community uh, forums. So we're looking forward to that. I mean, I, I think I realized that there's a lot of information out there and it, it can get confusing for folks. And I just want to reiterate the fact that all the information that we have from the project, the official project information is all on www.medfield.net. Um, click on explore on the top and then click on new elementary school and all the information is there. And I will add too that um, our warrant committee has been doing kind of a third party independent review of all of this stuff. Currently calling and, them Switzerland, right. the Switzerland I mean, they, warrant they committee. They have done a lot. Um, and they've met with everyone on all of this, and they could, I think their meeting still uh, coming up. Uh, they also have launched a website, which is off the town website, that has all this information on as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to see what the SBC has put on there, you can go on the warrant committee on the town website, and they're putting all their information up there as well, and they'll have that completed before town meeting in November. So again, just to close, town meeting is in November. It's November 7th for the special town meeting. That is the one where you have to sign, show up at a specific time, and the town will post that about two weeks beforehand. Mm -hmm. We're really looking to weather and also the pandemic and see kind of where our viral spread is right now as to whether it'll be outside or inside. Um, and that has to pass special town meeting with a yes uh, on the warrant article um, by two thirds. And then the, and that is essentially to appropriate an amount of money. The second vote uh, is a ballot vote, an electoral vote, like we do every other election at the Senior Center, and that is on Monday, November 15th. Open regular hours, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., um, and that needs to pass with 50% uh, plus one. And that is to actually then authorize the town to take <clears throat> out the bond. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-part process. We've done it before. Someday we will do it again, but I do respect that this is the this is the biggest step we've had to take for education in our town in 50 years. As I was looking up how we give a school back to the town, I realized that we had not decommissioned a school in Medfield since the FAF Center. Um, and I don't even know what that process was like then because that was 80 years ago. So... So I think the future has finally hit us and, and it's time. Mm -hmm. We need to get this done. We need to get this done for all of our kids. And we need to get this done now for our town. So thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. everyone who's listening. Appreciate it. Thank you.